Shalom y'all. <laughs> Ron here on a rainy day. What is today anyway? I don't even know what the day is. Uh, anyway, sorry. Um, thinking one last time about this, uh, this matter. Probably not the last time really if I were to look at reality. But in this particular thought pattern of talking about our growth in worship and our as we worship the Lord, we grow in the Lord, and we grow in these, you know, these steps that uh, that Simon Peter lays out. Uh, you know, Shimon Kepha. He lays them out in a in a letter where he talked about growth, even ranted against people who didn't grow, refused to grow. Anyway, I I'm looking now at, uh, and these are loose thoughts of the last say 500 years or so of history particularly here in America and you know how you know the history hopefully you know 1492 Columbus sailed the ocean blue he left on Tisha B'Av from Spain because it was very necessary for him to leave yes he got the blessing of the uh, seemingly anti-semitic king and queen but he left indeed that very morning of Tisha B'Av Tisha B'Av, if you th that would be a whole nother um, discussion here, but I'm just going to mention the phraseology, the ninth of Av. He left with three ships. Those three ships were loaded to the gill with Spanish Jews, Messianic Spanish Jews, I might say. Um, brought them to what would be later known as America spent some time in what was uh, an island that was deeded to him for a time period. We call it Jamaica nowadays. It was Columbus's island. For a while he sought that island. He begged for that island to be uh, free from the Inquisition. But they left due to the Inquisition for new land. And, uh, long, long and short made it here to America. A little bit after that some more Jews came to America. These were from the Netherlands. They, they came from the Netherlands, particularly from Amsterdam. They came into what is today New York and some into Brazil. There are towns in Brazil to this very day that uh, only Jewish names are found there. But nonetheless, when I say Jewish names, I mean uh, particularly uh, you know, Jewish names from the Netherlands. Nonetheless, they referred to the territory as the New Netherlands and to a town that they established as New Amsterdam. Today, of course, we call the New Netherlands, we refer to it as America, the United States of America, and New Amsterdam, we refer to it as New York. New York City was a rather Jewish city for a good while, a rather Orthodox Jewish city. And furthermore, other cities within the New England area, I'm thinking particularly now of Philadelphia. Philadelphia was named such because there was a cooperation between Judaism and Christianity at that time. And so it is that America rather soon became known as a Judeo-Christian nation. Judeo-Christian meaning there was a cooperation between Jews and Christians, a, a healthy cooperation. When I say cooperation, I don't mean they merely lived in the same neighborhood. I mean they worked together. So it was, there's some harmony. So in a very real sense, America started out, if you will, coming into the court. See, you, you don't have to, you can stay out there with the Passover lamb before the tabernacles. They've even built, we talked about this. Salvation happens before the tabernacle is even built, okay? Before really anything else as far as the nation is concerned, but you can stay out there with that Passover lamb and enjoy your salvation, do. But there, we in America, we came into the court, we did. Together, we came into the court and we learned courtesy with one another, working with one another. We learned the matters of relationship, those offerings that are mentioned, those are parables, they are about relationship with one another, sin, uh, sin, trespass, guilt, peace, those are Relationship matters, right? They could have caught, talked about concrete, I suppose, but they talked about relationship. On into Leviticus. We actually, in America, came into holiness. We, yeah, we, 
we touched on it at least, but we were working together close enough that we went through those trials, we went through that suffering, we went through those questions and came into, that propelled us on to a time of, yes, of holiness, of being able to distinguish between, to discern between right and wrong, even to the point of splitting a hair here or there, distinguish between holy and common and clean and unclean and so forth. But as you might consider it, and I believe strongly that we have, the term is backslidden. We have taken steps back out of there. We have dissed that particular time period even of America. We have taken steps all the way back perhaps to the gate. I feel that I per perhaps stand at the gate, even, because I want to meet us where we are, but I feel that's where we are. We le need to relearn courtesy, we need to relearn um, the matters of the court in distinguishing, being dis discerning. We, we, we need to, to know what discernment is again. Now we think we, need to, we all need to pray for discernment. Why do we need to pray for discernment? Because we have lost the everyday ability to discern. We haven't been walking there again. So, if I were to speak of the court in terms of the patriarchs, and I have a little bit, the court is like uh, Abraham and Sarah, Avraham and Sarah, and they they jostle back and forth. They learn how to get along. They do well in that. They do a wonderful, marvelous uh, couple. Um, they, of course, are very highly upheld as the patriarchs of three major religions in the world, you know, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. It is from there on that Islam breaks off, of course. Uh, we, Christianity and Judaism, recognize Isaac and Rebecca, Yitzhak and Rivka. Uh, my wife is Rivka, Rebecca, and uh, yeah, I don't mind laughing a little bit too. <laughs> but nonetheless, we kind of, we're kind of like that a little bit, kind of like Isaac and Rebecca. But Islam breaks off from there. Islam, yes, is a 1,400-year-old religion and no older, but in terms of the way they look at that time period, they consider Yishmael, not Isaac. So, from there, that's, that speaks of the holy place. Islam stays back in the court, and they even get out of the court, really, when you break it all down. They don't even go back to salvation, really. Anyway, the... The holy place we've spoken of it as Yitzhak and and uh, and Rivka and they they mirror each other, they reflect upon each other, they look a lot like each other. You know how how it is when marriages grow, even over time, but also just grow due to you know mileage. But from there, the holy of holies might be well. Well, who's the next married couple? Of course, Jacob um, marries two girls, and we know the story of that. He ended up having to. Well, I suppose he didn't have to, but, you know, he's he's visiting an Assyrian fellow who's very Assyrian, and those Assyrians can get rather ugly toward God's people, so he he works it out. He he, he works it out to the point that he he's almost assimilating, but no, he will just he'll marry two women. But... Jacob has a brother named Esau, and they are twins. In the holy place, I spoke of two as if they were twins, reflecting one another, looking a lot like each other, but that's a married couple. In the holy of holies, let me speak of a, some twins who are actually born, conceived as twins, and that's Jacob and Esau. Yaakov and Esav. Esav is born as if he were done. He is done. Esav means he's done. <laughs> but Esav makes a big thing out of his skin tone, so it is. I want some of that red, that red stuff. You know the, the text. And so he shows how little he thinks of his birthright. He dishonors his heritage and goes off and becomes Edom. What Esau today must do is drop off Edom, leave Edom in the past and become Jacob's twin once again. You see, Judaism for about 1900 years 
if actually longer, 2,000 years perhaps, has seen Esau as Christianity, specifically has seen Edom as Christianity. Now, yes, you can go to Isaiah 63 and talk about this. Be very, very honest. But Edom is that Christianity, that Christendom, which is kind of like Christian dumb. It's that that side of Christianity before there was any Reformation, before there was evangelical Christianity. And, you know, yeah, we can talk about the Crusades. And yes, there were about 300 years bef of, of Rome putting up with Islam attacking and attacking and attacking before they attacked back. But, yes, the simple fact is they attacked Jews as well when they attacked back, when they went to take Jerusalem back. So there's some, you know, there's some hard things to talk about there. So history has been made of Jacob's twin brother being against Jacob because he has put on a dome. A dome means red. So he has put on red and being against his brother. I feel that it is... It's prophecy. There's much prophecy about this. Isaiah chapter 14, Isaiah chapter 58. We could go, I'm not going to sit here and rattle off some, you know, some text, but there's much prophecy, and it is prophecy yet to be fulfilled, where Esau and Jacob must come back together. They must come back together and recognize that they are twins. They're not merely brothers, they're twins. They look, they're, they're this, more or less the same person. We come back to that. There was a little hint of that in the first century. There was a hint of that in America. And we keep sliding back from that, but part and parcel of the Holy of Holies is agape love. May we love, grow to that point of love. You have to have those steps in between before you can get there. You don't, love is not the first step, okay? But we grow because we, we float love around nowadays. Like, you know, you can pick up a rock and throw it at somebody's face and call that love. But, or I don't know, have sexual intercourse with a horse and you call it love. But we need to learn what love is again. And you can only learn what agape love is. Agape when you take those other steps toward agape just in the same way you have to go through intercession in order to get to the holy of holies you cannot know and experience and live out agape without going through those other steps of growth it is not possible america we can do it we can grow to that place of agape again so that esau and jacob so that Esav and Yaakov, Yisrael, see, Jacob left that name behind too. Esau must leave Edom behind. Esau must be Esau. Yisrael is Yisrael, and Esau must not merely recognize, but be twins with, once again, twins with Yisrael. Today is the day. Hey, the third time's a charm, right? This is the third commonwealth. Israel, as I speak, is living into their 70th year. And Jerusalem, Yerushalayim, as I speak, is living into their 50th year. Happy birthday. Shalom, y'all.